After my recent video about bubble card, I've been getting a few questions about the top section of my dashboard which includes time, date, and weather information. So today I'll show you how to make it yourself. If you don't want to type in the code yourself, you can find it on my website. Before we start, you will need to install button card from Hacks. Link is in the video description. Start by adding a grid card and add a button card to it. We need to add a name and a label. We will edit these later and we need to set show underscore label to true. Then we can start styling. For this, we will style the grid, the card, the name and the label. The grid template areas will be pretty standard, just N on top of L. It doesn't make a difference right now, but we need it so the weather card matches later. For the card styling, I set background to none. For name, I set justify self to start. Then I just add some very basic font styling. It's exactly the same for the label. This will just have a bigger font size and weight. Something I forgot to add under the card styling is overflow visible. This makes sure none of the text is hidden if it goes outside the card edges. Let's start tackling the trickier stuff. Button card uses Java as opposed to Jinja that is normally used in Home Assistant. If you want to learn, you can pause the video and type it in. You could also find the code in the description. I'll be honest, ChatGPT helped me with this code. The date is a little different. I've created two template sensors inside my configuration YAML file. You'll find this in the description as well. Add it to your file and reload the YAML configuration. Then again, use the code from the description to display the date. And that is the first part of this tutorial done. Let's continue with the weather card. Add a new button card, and like last time, add a name and a label. Set show underscore label to true. For this card, we will also need to add a custom field, but we'll finish it later. For styling, it's much the same as the date card. Let's add grid, card, name, label, and the custom field to the styling section. For card styling, I set overflow to visible and background to none. For the name and label, I just do it the same as the date card, but this time I set justify self to end. The font styling is exactly the same. We will use a custom field to add the animated weather icons. These icons aren't built into Home Assistant, so we need to find some icons that we can use. If you look at the weather forecast integration, we can find what weather conditions we need icons for. Basmilius has created some really nice looking icons in SVG format. I can't redistribute them, but you just have to download the icon you think suits the best for the different conditions. Link to his website is in the description. Make sure that you rename the files to be exactly the same as the different weather conditions. Once you have all the files you need, you need to move them into a folder inside the www folder of your Home Assistant installation. Then use the code from the description to make the icon show up. This is just creating a variable called weather that will be the state of the weather integration. In this example, it is cloudy. Then we show the icon with a IMG SRC tag that uses the weather variable instead of an actual file name. Then we need to place this icon properly. Like I've showed in a few other videos, I use the grid function of button card. Let's also add the proper content for our name and label. You'll find the code in the description again. For label, it will just be the temperature attribute of the weather integration. If you have your own outdoor temperature sensor, you could use that instead. For the indoor sensor, I have created a group helper that averages all my temperature sensors. Go to Settings, Devices and Helpers, and create a new sensor group helper. Add all your temperature sensors and set the type to Median. Then let's just style the icon, and we should be finished. This is all very basic, so just copy what I've done. The bottom margin makes sure the icon is aligned with the outdoor temperature. I noticed that I had forgotten to set the grid columns to two. I also added some padding to the left and right side. This just moves everything in a little bit so it's not placed right on the edge of the screen. You should also turn off render as squares. And that concludes this tutorial. I personally use this in my dashboard, and I think it's a nice way to start a mobile dashboard. I also plan to add a pop-up with more information when clicking on the weather card. Hope you liked this video. 
I have a lot more content coming, so if you like what I've done so far, I would really appreciate it if you would like the video and subscribe to my channel. Until next time.